Hi, all. I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, December 22nd, 2022, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you today. 10 Pro Tips for Scanning with the Matterport Pro 3 Camera. And here to talk to us about that is Tom Sparks. Tom is founder of Sparks Media Group and uh, located uh, halfway between uh, San Francisco and Sacramento. Tom, thank you for sharing your expertise with us today. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, Tom, for for context for today's uh, discussion about the Matterport Pro 3 camera, uh, tell us about Sparks Media Group. So Sparks Media Group is a media company. We provide um, pretty much every tool that a, a real estate agent could need to market a property. Uh, photos, we provide video, we provide um, 3D virtual tours, floor plans, property websites, virtual staging, virtual decluttering, uh, rendering of um, of uh, buildings. And yeah, pretty much everything that an agent could need to market a, a property. Tom, you mentioned residential. Do you shoot other categories as well? Other categories of clients? We do. Um, we're uh, heavy into residential, but we also do commercial. Uh, getting into industrial, um, not quite there yet where I want to be. Uh, but yeah, we we want to be able to touch all areas. And uh, you mentioned virtual tours. Which platforms are you using for your virtual tours? Right now we're using Matterport and we're also using iGuide. And those are the two that I'm sticking with. Okay. And I imagine you published a Google Street View as well. We do. Uh, and uh, I, I noticed on your website, uh, sparksmediagroup.com, that you also have another company, scanyourspace.com. Uh, what's the context of having two different domains, two different brands? Sure. So sparksmediagroup.com was really geared towards the uh, residential crowd. Uh, we started getting um, contacted by retail, um, bakeries, restaurants, uh, fitness centers, um, car dealerships, and uh, they wanted pricing to do 3D virtual tours of their properties, to do photos, to do video. Uh, and those are in a completely different ball game as far as budgets. So I didn't want to point them all to Sparks Media Group where it says, you know, we can do 2,000 square feet for $200. Why not create this whole new website and say, okay, 2,000 square feet of commercial is going to be $600 or whatever it is. So um, I created Scan Your Space. And uh, really where that's going right now is um, the hospitality industry. Um, country clubs, uh, hotels, resorts that have ballrooms that are available for rent um, or spaces that they rent out for private events. We'll go in and scan those. We'll do uh, 360 degree photos, um, not with Matterport or iGuide, but with our regular DSLR cameras or mirrorless cameras. And then we'll um, virtually stage those and put them all together in a nice package and uh, deliver it to them so they can put it on their website and use for marketing purposes. And and uh, the coverage area for Sparks Media Group for Scan Your Space? So we're covering all of California right now. Um, we have uh, photographers in Texas, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, Idaho, and... Arizona, if I didn't say Arizona. And I, I imagine those are independent contractors that, that you're using to, to cover all those states? The majority, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And uh, and before we move into the Matterport Pro 3 camera, uh, how did Sparks Media Group get started? So I uh, started doing photography 20 plus years ago, uh, family, friends, birthday parties, that kind of thing. Then I started doing um, weddings, uh, corporate events, family photos. And I was kind of getting burned out in that. 
And I joined a company as a contractor to shoot residential real estate. And I said, this is cool because um, I'm pretty extroverted, but sometimes, you know, I'm just not in the mood to be around people. And when you're shooting a house alone, there's usually no, you know, there's nobody there. So it's it's perfect. The houses don't talk back. The houses aren't late, that kind of thing. So it was great. I, lo- I love driving and I was able to drive around the houses and shoot them and deliver the content. I didn't have to worry about editing them or anything. Uh, but the pay wasn't that great. And there was a lot of gaps I noticed in services that were provided and really just overall customer service. Uh, you know, it got to a point where I remember showing up late to a house. I I told the company that I was going to be late because of traffic and I was probably 30, 45 minutes late. I showed up and the agent was upset, pissed off. Uh, you're late. I was about to leave. I got other stuff to do than to wait for you. I said, sorry, you know, I called the company and told them I was going to be late. They never let the the client know. So that right there, I was like, well, this is just bad customer service. And um, in an effort to be able to provide more services to this company I was working for, I went out and bought a Pro 2. Um, never having used Matterport, never having had a job, no experience with it, just bought a Pro 2. And I called them and I said, hey, guys, I know that you offer Matterport. I went out and bought a Pro 2 camera. Uh, and so if you have any service, if you have any orders for that in my area, feel free to send me out. Well, they got super defensive and said that I was now competition with them. And I was like, well, how is buying a Matterport putting me in competition with you when I have a camera? And that's technically considered competition, you know. So anyway, that kind of just dissolved the relationship with me and them. I said, okay, well, I like shooting houses. Um I know customer service and, you know, let's just start, start Sparks Media Group. So, and the rest of this history. So you had a Matterport Pro 2 camera. Do you still have that? I do. And when did you get a Matterport Pro 3 camera? I, like uh, some other people that I've, I've known um, or that I know, uh, it was kind of a holdout to getting it. Um, I think I got it maybe a month ago. I'd have to go back and look at the videos I post, but yeah, it was- okay, back back in November, and yeah, uh, and how much uh, how many how many days have you had a chance to to shoot with the Matterport Pro Three camera? Oh, I've I've used it, I've used it a lot on a lot of jobs already um, for myself and for other companies as as a contractor for them. So, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you how many days in a row, but it's a lot. It's a lot. It's it's so much that uh, it's actually I would I would add one other hat to your services as a key influencer. You're actually publishing uh, a ton of video on your YouTube channel, which is how I met you, and and that I found your YouTube videos about the Matterport Pro Three camera uh, awesome, super helpful. So uh, thank you. And um, which is actually why why you're here today. So to kind of jump into 10 pro tips for scanning with Matterport Pro 3 camera, uh, I thought we'd just start with, with scanning and maybe talk a little bit about indoor scanning first. Uh, uh, is, is there anything that you, in fact, even before we do that, let's, let's talk about your initial, uh, what are your initial thoughts about the Matterport Pro 3 camera? Well, um, I have it right here. So I'll just hold it as I'm talking about it. But, um, you know, it's solidly built. It feels a lot sturdier than the Pro 2. Um, I've personally never dropped the Pro 2, but I've seen a ton of, you know, uh, forum posts about people dropping the Pro 2. And uh, I I don't know what would happen if this drops, but it seems like it's pretty bulletproof. Um, maybe the the LiDAR might not be. Um, but yeah, it's, it's solidly built. Um, I love the removable battery, the rechargeable battery. Um, yeah, I like it. Small, compact. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I, I'll ask the question a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, now that you've had a chance to use it indoors, outdoors, have, have done quite a bit of scanning with it. Uh, any buyer's remorse about buying it or super happy, absolutely glad you did? 
No, I'm glad I did. Uh, no buyer's remorse. I, I I do have a love hate relationship with Matterport. Um, there was a while where we were beefing, and I was only offering high guides. Um, but no, uh, Matterport is is I think here to stay, and uh, I don't have any remorse. And as soon as I'm ready, and as soon as they're available, I'm going to go out and buy more. I think they are available. The batteries went pretty quick. <laughs> yes. Uh, in, in fact, uh, in the We Get Around Network Forum, WGANForum.com, we just started a, a text alert service that, because the batteries have been so hard to, to get a hold of. They became available for 24 hours yesterday. And uh, if anyone is tired of checking, we can just uh, yeah. go to the We Get Around Network Forum and uh, search the subject line for, for text, Pro 3. And uh, so now a service that we offer is to help people know when the Matterport Pro 3 camera batteries uh, on sale again. It's an so, invaluable service. I, I'll have to say that thank you for posting that because had I not got your uh, email alert about that post, I wouldn't have been able to get on and get the two that I got yesterday. So thank you. They should be here today. Uh, you're, you're welcome. So uh, how would you compare the Matterport Pro 3 camera to the Matterport Pro 2 camera when it comes to scanning? Uh, it's it's maybe like Ferrari versus Toyota um, in the sense of speed. Uh, the Pro 3 is incredibly quicker. Uh, I posted that first impression video that I did, and I was shocked by how quick it was turning. Uh, that was the first time that I actually had used it was when I was making that video and it just was like, and it was done. Uh, the Pro 2 is fast, but the Pro 3 is faster, obviously. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just better. Are you, are you going to get rid of your Matterport Pro 2 camera or uh, there's a reason why you're going to keep that and keep the Pro 3? Uh, no, I'm keeping it. I'm I have a few of them, a few Pro Twos, and I'm on the classic plan with that. And so, uh, you know, I'd say right now, ninety percent of my residential customers are still doing uh, interior only. And so, so that so that makes a little bit of a challenge because you you can't use the Matterport Pro Three camera with the Matterport Classic pricing. So. Right. Any residential that you're doing, you're using the Pro 2, and I imagine that there's a little bit of tension inside about, gee, I, I love this Ferrari. I would like to use it for scanning of homes, but these clients, I, I need to keep on a classic plan, and therefore I have to shoot them with a Pro 2. Is that? Yeah, that's a perfect way to put it, and that's probably the only tension I have in regards to it is I have to use the Pro 3 on the new plan. And, you know, I'm, I want to keep everybody as, as many as I can on the classic plan. Okay. So if, uh, if someone was new to Matterport and they were deciding between a Matterport Pro 2 camera and a Matterport Pro 3 camera, there is a somewhat of a difference of a few thousand dollars in difference in pricing. If that was you and you were making a decision today, would you still just take the Ferrari o over the uh, sedan? I would, I would, um, simply because when I had just the Pro 2, uh, I did have a few clients, including the school, and they wanted me to scan their outside campus or scan the outside of a house that was for sale. And um, I would have to do that, you know, at the dusk hour uh, when the sun wasn't shining right in, or I'd have to rent the BLK 360. Uh, and that was expensive and a headache and the BLK is a whole different beast of slowness. Um, so if I was just getting into it and having to decide on what to get, I would get the Pro 3 first. Despite the fact that it's a few thousand dollars more than the Matterport Pro 2 camera. Primarily yeah. because the, I think I'm hearing two things may correct me or, or enhance one was speed and uh and two was outdoors uh correct yeah in, in that in that order speed and then outdoors okay. and there, no you could save a, a couple well you could save a couple thousand dollars and get the pro 2 but then if you ever need to do outdoor you're going to rent a blk and at some point renting the blk all those times is going to add up to that couple thousand dollars 
Okay. So uh, let's go back to scanning. Uh, uh, any observations in terms of indoor scanning that you've done of uh, uh, any challenges? I, you know, what, what comes to mind to me is glass surfaces and offices that have glass. Uh, have, have you noticed any challenges of, of scanning with the Pro 2 with, with uh, offices separated by glass or with the Pro 3? Or is Pro 3 work just fine? Mark windows, trim mirrors? Yeah, um, I'll say when I was using the Pro 2 and, and doing areas that had glass doors or glass um, uh, railings, you know, in the outside space, uh, I would tend to mark those uh, prior to getting right up on it. Uh, and then I never really had any issues. Um, with the Pro 3, I, I just did a car dealership the other day and there's a ton of glass in there um, and no issues at all. And it, I even went through a glass wall that had a glass door and it saw both sides of it, no issues, no alignment issues, anything. Okay, so I'm going to actually count that as our first tip is related to glass is that the that you don't have to do anything special it, the Matterport Pro 3 camera is just going to work you still may need to mark your your windows uh, as you're scanning is that true or no, work works even without marking it. Uh, well, previously with the Pro 2 I would mark as I'm approaching, but before I get to it. Uh, now I mark after it. So I still do all the markings while I'm there on site, but I do it after I don't have to do it before. And I, I haven't had any issues. Okay. Uh, any, do you notice any difference with error messages, uh, Pro 3 versus Pro 2? No, no, I did get one. Uh, and I, I wish I would have remembered what it was, but I did get one error message on the Pro 3. Uh, and I just did a rescan and it kept going. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've talked with a number of uh, Matterport service providers that have owned a Pro Matterport Pro 2 camera or still own it and now have the Matterport Pro 3 camera. And they talk about way less uh, error messages while using the Pro 3. Is, is that true for you too or haven't noticed that yet? I, I haven't noticed it to to that uh, point, um, I never really got a lot of errors with the Pro 2. Um, I think the way I scan, uh, I tend to scan more than I need, um, mm -hmm. more scan points than I need. So I think that eliminates a lot of issues. Um, okay. But I, 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 I'm not one of those people that are on the groups going, oh my God, I'm having errors today. What's, what's going on? I just mm -hmm. don't tend to get those. Knock on wood. <laughs> Okay, and uh, in terms of scanning outdoors, um, uh, distance between scans. Yeah, so I did a test. Um, I took my handheld laser measure with me and um, originally I was just picking up the tripod and going five steps, putting it down. So I did this test and uh, I started it. I, I typically, when I'm outside, I was going every 10 steps. Uh, but then I said, let me try to go, you know, 11 steps, 12 steps, 13 steps. Okay. 57 minutes later, how many steps were you up to between <laughs> scans? Uh, I think it, it finally got an alignment error at 43. So I had to go back to 42. So 42 for me was the limit, 42 steps. 42 steps. And then you've actually done a little translation table. So 42 steps of Tom Sparks. Five foot nine self it equals 115 feet, six inches. Say again. 115 feet, six inches. 115. Correct. 15 and six inches. And that was, tell me number of steps again. 42. 42. So, uh, and that's versus maybe every six or eight feet with a Matterport Pro 2 camera can't even do that outdoors in, unless you're a rocket scientist and understand and appreciate how the camera works in order to, to tease that out. A magic, we'll, we'll just 
for the purpose of this conversation, say it's nearly impossible to scan outdoors with a Matterport Pro 2 camera unless you are an artist. With the Matterport Pro 3 camera, no issues in terms of scanning outdoors bright sun? Yeah, no no issues. Um, and can scan uh, 42 steps. 115 feet. That's cool. I was impre- I was impressed at 15. I was impressed at 40 feet. So it truly it 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 almost means from a practical standpoint, anywhere you want to put the camera outdoors, there's a good chance that the the scan's going to connect. And in your 57 minute uh, video, thank you, which was actually awesome. I noticed in three days you had 300 people had had watched the video. So there's obviously wow. interest in the distance be- between the the tripod. Uh, 42 steps, 115 feet, six inches. Th- that's really awesome. I think just as a tip, if you're thinking about buying the Matterport Pro 3 camera, the ability to scan outdoors and to have a lot of distance between scans. Uh, uh, and uh, th- you may not necessarily do that in a mo- model, but because you want some walking around experience, but it it may be handy to know there's quite a quite a large distance that you could do between scans. Yeah. And that's one of the things that uh, stood out to me. I think, I don't know if I saw it somewhere on Matterport's marketing was like, you know, you can scan further apart. You can, but how does that translate into a a good user experience for navigating it, walking around? Um, Well, you know, Tom, you you put together this, uh, this tour of uh, help me out Mar Island Viejo. California? Island Vallejo. Yep. Yep. And uh, I I walked around and I walked around even where you were close to the 42 steps. And uh, I found it okay. If I really wanted to to walk that decommissioned military base, that I could move quickly and cover a lot of ground. And I didn't necessarily need to to step every 10 feet. uh, uh, you know, you, you, I understand you might, from a business standpoint, might scan it differently if you need to be able to put a scan in front of each storefront, uh, in front of each building as you're doing it. Um, but the fact that you had a lot of distance towards the end of creating that tour, I, I found that just fine. And okay. I think this probably goes back to when you talked about the rotation of the camera speed, you called that, I think, a Ferrari versus a sedan. Uh, There's really kind of like, I think there's three reasons of speed. One is not just the rotation, but two is the distance between scans, because that means you may be doing way less scan points in a tour. And if if, if you can do a tour in 100 scans rather than 200 scans, that itself, you might say, is half the time. Yeah, no, I mean, I did that whole tour real time as you saw in the video in about an hour and it was 140 ish scans or so yeah and then uh, i think that third thing would relate to this to, to scan errors if you have if you do end up experiencing fewer scanning errors then that's going to translate to time savings so yeah. you haven't actually noticed that just yet no um uh i had asked about uh outdoor bright sun are there any issues in uh, using the pro matterport pro 3 camera in bright sun no i did i did an airplane uh the other day and um got a little lens flare which is annoying but it happens i guess with any camera right so uh, i can't be mad at that um that may be just the spin for your client in terms of uh it has this nice artsy effect and yeah. bright sunlight that looks like high very richly shot yeah. cinematic movies that the wax sparkle. job on the, the wax job on the wings uh okay so uh, uh bright sun no issue other than you may get some lens flare that's good to know um matterport pro 2 camera a lot of discussion that we get around network forum about uh shooting outdoors with a pool that the water ends up black in a dollhouse what about a matterport pro 3 camera scanning outdoors is water also still black in the matterport dollhouse so the very first house i did with the pro 3 um had a pool and uh i noticed it was black on the mini on the mini map and so what i did was i did a 360 
uh, and converted it to 3D. And it showed up as water on the mini map. So I sent it in uh, for processing and it came back black. Mm -hmm. So it handles it the same. I'm going to say darn, because that actually should work. And that would be a pro tip, which would be uh, used if you're using the Matterport Pro 2 camera, shoot it as a 360, convert it with Matterport Cortex, and voila, have water. Uh, uh, I, I, I'd be curious, uh, not today, but if you end up continuing to try that to see if you have success, and if that was just a random thing that the water ended up being black in the dollhouse. Well, it brings uh, up a good point that if it's, showing up on the mini map as a, as water they should maybe that's a bug so maybe i'll create a ticket on that and see if they can explain that it it, it would be interesting because in, in in theory it should just work and uh other, other members of we get around network in fact we we did an entire show uh uh with uh uh, Kevin and Eric Doyle with home3d.us.us. And that, that was one of the tips that they suggested. They carry a, I want to say a Ricoh Theta Z1 camera in order to shoot 360s to, uh, to, to, uh, for their outdoor. I want to say maybe they were doing exactly what you're, you're talking about. But, uh, anyway, um, I'm in the weeds a little bit off topic. Um, is there, before we move on to talking about the gear and I have some questions on that, is there anything else on scanning indoors, outdoors that you would offer as uh, tips to people? Oh, so one thing outdoors is, uh, you know, the, the video I did on Mare Island, I wasn't concerned if my shadow was in the shot, um, just because it wasn't for anything other than my uses, but that's something to pay attention to is, uh, standing back far enough and i guess i can carry over to the pro 2 as well but I, I don't know how my shadow affects with the lidar so standing back far enough so that your shadow is not in any of whether it's the photos or the lidar uh i think would be important okay uh uh i i suppose that would be interesting if you could charge a premium to clients to say we're going to shoot at noon in order to eliminate the camera shadow or or a person shadow, and that's yeah. a premium. It's like you don't you don't pay you don't get stuck on the middle seat on an airplane. Yep. Uh, pay a premium <laughs> for aisle and window seats. Um, do you uh, you know I I I think about the Matterport platform as spatial data actually being this most valuable thing that Matterport does uh, that enables all kinds of applications. Are you doing anything where the scan data has been important to your clients or not, not yet? Not yet. Uh, I do have a client I'm talking with um, uh, to scan some buildings that are going to go undergo renovation and they want to get uh, the, the data files, the E57s or the BIM files. Uh, and so I, I started on making a kind of a comparison chart between the Pro 2, the Pro 3, the BLK, uh, and some of the higher end scanners, the Faro uh, and such. Uh, and I'm working on that spreadsheet now, and I'm just going to kind of give it to them and say, okay, here's, if, if you're at this price point, this is kind of what you're going to get. If you want this level of quality, you're going to have to go to this price point and that kind of thing so yeah i don't have any real world experiences right now getting okay. data from it but um yeah okay well uh, two things that that uh, sparks if you don't mind yeah. uh two, two things that that sparks one we did do a wgan tv live at five show on matterport matter pack and e57 file and level of detail uh, often re referenced as LOD, and I think that show for anyone that's that's really interested in understanding the data of the Matterport Pro 3 camera uh, and its limitations in terms of how you sell that into a client, highly recommend go to the We Get Around Network forum, WGANforum.com, search in the box there for uh, uh, Pro 3 E57, that show will pop up. Um, and, uh, and, and we discuss things like outdoor elevations as built, 
uh, construction documentation. And yeah. th there really is this conversation about what is the client's expectations about the level of detail, the LOD, right. versus what is the capabilities of the Matterport Pro 3, the Matterport Matterpack, the Matterport E57 file. We're not going to discuss that anymore on this show, just yeah. reference people back and uh, uh, in, certainly interested in the future, uh, how the spatial data from the Matterport Pro 3 camera ends up helping you get additional categories of clients and additional clients. Is, sure. is, was that in the back of your mind when, when you bought it, that this might open up new use cases for you? Uh, I, I haven't been using it. I hadn't been using the Pro 2 as that. Uh, so not really, but it's kind of an added bonus icing on the cake. If I can okay. use this and get good data out of it, then why not? Okay. Uh, uh, let's switch gears and talk a little bit about gear. Uh, you, you talked about buying two extra batteries, uh, uh, Matterport Pro 3 camera batteries yesterday, in fact. Yeah. Um, do you, is, tell us about how long does your battery, one battery last and why you ended up buying two additional batteries? So this is one thing I wanted to try to get done before our meeting today uh, and hadn't really had a chance. I did take some notes and I'm kind of referencing them. But when I did that Mare Island scan, I started at 60% battery and I got down to 41% by the time I was done. And that was over 143 scans. So I don't have a, a good benchmark from, you know, 100% down to zero. 500 scans i don't know um i haven't ran out of a battery yet uh so why'd you buy two more because i'm an extremist and there's a battery shortage and if if i need to sell some to make some no <laughs> <laughs> uh no just because i am an extremist and um you know hopefully i want to get a couple more pro threes and so i just want to have enough battery if i'm doing a big project i don't want to have to stop and charge Okay. And have you done any all day shoots of that, that, that might be a challenge if you were only had one Matterport Pro 3 camera battery? I've done all day shoots, but I haven't killed the battery yet. Uh, on the Pro 3? On the Pro 3. Yeah. Okay. All right. And, and do you ever do uh, maybe listings where there's no power in the Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes. sometimes. Uh, so is, is there anything I, other than that, that safety, I just want to make sure that I have a battery. I don't want to run out of battery. Was there anything specifically that you decided you wanted to get to? I, I, I'm trying to understand why you just didn't buy one, one Matterport Pro 3 camera battery. Uh, I just felt it's the extremist in me. I could have bought one. I wanted to buy two. I didn't want to spend the money to buy three. I had three in my cart originally, but I felt like I should give somebody else that extra one. Okay. <laughs> um, no, it just comes down to, you know, th with my regular camera, I shoot Sony and I have eight batteries for that. I never have ran through eight at one time, but, you know, I have four batteries for my drone. So uh, if, if a battery is low and I forget to charge it, I have, Hey, I have a backup. Um, okay. Sounds like a plan. Is there any other, uh, special gear that you carry because you're shooting with a pro three versus a pro two? Not, not specifically. Uh, I bought those wedgets, uh, the door stops, um, that's I was thinking of something else. Cause you, you, you did tell me, cause I, 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 I yeah. asked you about, you know, do you carry a a hex three millimeter wrench? And I think the answer was yes. I I do have one, not because of uh, the reason that this has became loose. Um, I just have one because my tripod occasionally they'll wear work themselves out, and I'll just ah, have okay. Hold hold that up just for a second, if you would. So this so this is the quick release that goes between the tripod and the Matterport Pro Three camera. There have been some members of the we we get around network forum community that have reported that the mechanism gets loose. Yeah, 
and they carry literally carry a hex wrench, a three millimeter, in order to be able to tighten that just in case if they're in the field. Correct. So that's what you're. So you happen to be carrying your wrench related to your tripod, but it you happen to have a set that you carry. So just in case that got loose, you have you had a chance? Have have you had to tighten that? No. no. Okay. No. And uh, uh, tripod? Are you using a Matterport uh, tripod or a different tripod? No. And somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like Matterport is using Manfrotto. Maybe. Seems like it's a rebranded. Manfrotto? I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Uh, I, I wasn't a fan of uh, the tripod that they sent me with the Axis. Um, okay. Matterport Axis smartphone rotator. Yeah. And that tripod was, you know, paper thin and uh, yes. not very usable. So I have this, uh, I've, I've used this one for years I, and I love it so much that uh, I bought a couple of them. Um, what is it? it? It's a ProMaster Specialist SP532C, and it's the carbon fiber version. Okay. And then I have um, a head on top, the SPH45P. Can we see that? So, and why, so... Can you put, take that off your tripod just to show us what you got and then maybe hold it up in, in front of the camera? So, and, and, and which one is that? This is the ProMaster SPH 45P. SPH 45P, as in Paul. Okay, and, and why do you like this, uh, this mount? Well, it's just uh, easy to use. Um, it's fluid. Uh, I've been using this particular brand and, and make and model. Um, okay. This is the third one that I've owned. Okay. Uh, but I've been using it since 2016. Okay. Now that makes me a little bit nervous because there's a, I would call that a ball head that's on top of that. It is uh, a ball. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I, I'm going to issue a warning, and then maybe you could comment on that. In, in, unless you're a longtime serious professional photographer, be super careful about buying a ball head with a Matterport Pro 3 camera or a Matterport Pro 2 camera, for that matter, because you could easily lose your camera. Let me rewind. I don't use the ball head for the Pro 2 or the Pro 3. Thank you. Yeah, I attach it directly to the tripod. Are you are you as as uh, concerned about losing that either the Pro Two or the Pro Three if you were to use that uh, bald head? Yeah. Oh, you couldn't yeah. use it anyway because you you need that quick release uh, piece for Matterport. Right, but with the Pro Two, um, I think I put it on here once, and I I don't know why I did it. I just wasn't thinking. Uh, I didn't drop it, but I've actually dropped my camera my regular camera off of this because this, the, it tightens up. It's really great. Don't get me wrong, but sometimes I'm just in a hurry up and let's get set up and I don't tighten it down all the way. And then the camera's like, Whoop. um, so okay. with the pro two and the pro three, yeah, I attach it directly to the tripod. Okay. What are you doing about uh, how you carry your Matterport pro three camera in the field? Uh, I bought the case. I didn't buy the acceleration pack. So I went out and bought the case separately. Did you buy that for Matterport? I did. Are you happy with it? No, uh, it, you know, it's kind of bulky. I think they have space for what, six batteries and just a lot of extra stuff that I don't have. Okay. And it was really uh, annoying looking at all those empty battery slots when I didn't have any batteries. Uh, <laughs> so it could be smaller. I, I, is the is the foam pick and pluck or, or is it actually... Uh, uh, do, do you have it there handy? I, I do. I can grab it. I think it's laser cut. Let me grab it real quick. Hold on. Yeah. Let's... let's take a look at that. I think that would be, oh, you have one of those follow me cameras. So we're, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're, we're, we're following you. Maybe if you go back to your, uh, to your chair there, we're looking outside the side door at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> follow me back. Yeah, it's following you. Uh, it's, it's getting there almost. Ah, ah. <laughs> Thank you. Now we got you. 
I was just curious to, to see that case and I, if it's possible to hold it up. So that's interesting because it looks like you bought that case separately. But when I go to Amazon.com and I look at the Matterport Pro 3 case online, it doesn't have that pre-cut foam when you buy the individual case. So actually it did. Did that surprise you when you bought it? Uh, no, I, you know, I bought. Could you case. hold it up one more time just so everybody could see yeah, the, the case? Follow me, the follow me on the camera is freaking out. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So it's got room for some uh, heavy duty door stops. The, the Matterport Pro 3, does it carry the Matterport Pro 3 camera within the case? Yes. It does. Okay. And then it's got places for batteries, battery charger. Uh, Six batteries. Two chargers. Okay. Yeah. So you, so, okay, you put it down. That's great. Thanks for showing that. Were, were you surprised? Were you surprised that it, it had the, the, the fittings? Because the picture doesn't show that. No, I, on Matterports, it did show it, didn't it? It, it. I want to say, certainly when I go to Amazon, that it shows just pick and pluck kind of foam. Uh, and I got to think it's the same case. I bought it. Um, so I normally buy from Amazon. I bought it from Matterports directly. And on Matterports, it did show it as it pre-cut. And and I am a fan of pre-cut foam. I don't like cutting my own foam. Yeah. Uh, pick and pull is is annoying too. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons I did buy it. If I found a smaller case that had it pre-cut, I would have bought that. But this is just the one that they had. Yeah. Trying to do just a quick search yeah. on the Matterport Amazon uh, subset here. And well, that's interesting. I'm not sure I even see the case being offered for for sale. On yeah, I don't see one. It, it was, and it's no longer. Okay, very interesting. All right, thank you on that. Is there anything else on uh, uh, gear-related? Gear uh care and feeding of the camera does it does it does it feel like it's at, or at the top of the show you mentioned that it feels really sturdy is there anything that makes you gives you angst to how about cleaning um does, is it all no uh you know the lens cloth that came with it is great um i haven't had to use it too much um kind of just you know before i start i'll look at it and say okay looks clean to me there's you know no dust on the the glass um i haven't tried it outside i did try it outside in between rain but i haven't tried it during rain and i don't yeah. think I'll do. i i i don't have it in me to <clears throat> ask you to do that for our audience yeah i know uh, your six thousand dollar investment there might uh and i know some people that have used the pro 2 outside during rain and i still wouldn't do it i think there's just a limit no i'm not going right. to do it <laughs> So I, I noticed in the We Get Around Network forum that some members have, have various uh, lighting solutions. Uh, there's not really a, a place to attach anything, it looks like, to the Matterport Pro 3 camera for lighting. Uh, is, is there? Do you have any thoughts on lighting? I do. Can I grab something? Yeah. Uh, I'm, all, I'm also curious if you've scanned outdoors or scanned mm -hmm. indoors in low lighting. We talk about bright sunlight outdoors, yeah. but any low light. Haven't done low light yet. Okay. Um, for my Pro 2, I bought these uh, Litra lights. Yes. And just a bunch of various GoPro kind of mounts. And then I'll mount this right on top of the Pro 2. Okay. So I think... L-I-T-R. L-I-T-R-A. R-A. Lytra. Okay. And these ones are dead, so I can't turn them on, but they're extremely bright. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in fact, we did an entire WGAN TV Live at Five show on those lights. So if anyone wants a deeper dive uh, on, on that, and there's actually, a, uh, if it's still for sale, a specific mount for the Matterport Pro 2 camera. On, yeah, so on this one worked great, but you know i would think that you could just take this and stick it right there hmm. well yeah. that makes me nervous doesn't make what? you nervous why i don't know change the torque of the camera six thousand yeah. dollars no i'm gonna be a rebel 
and try it. <laughs> All right, report back to us, please. <laughs> uh, I'm just looking at my notes on uh, gear. Um, uh, instantly on that tripod, I want to say that fi that fiber tripod you use, if I'm not mistaken, is like a $400 tripod. Extremist, it is. Okay. Uh, I just want to point out, so when our, our members start Googling and looking for that, uh, it, it is a pricey tripod for, for most real estate photographers. Uh, Tom, why, why do you decide you need a tripod that costs twice as much as what everybody else is using? Well, I've, you know, previous to really diving into this, I would always buy the $30 Best Buy Fry's kind of tripods, little plastic mm -hmm. ones, and they would always break. And I went years without having one because I thought tripods sucked and I didn't need them. Uh, but you need one for real estate. Uh, and so I figured, okay, well, do I want to lug around an aluminum version of that, which I think might be around 200 mm -hmm. all day? multiple times a day, multiple shoots, or do I want to just spring for something that's lightweight and more comfortable to carry around? And that's what I chose to do. Mm -hmm. And um, you mentioned three. So should we be concerned about the, it wears out or no, you just, you're a busy professional photographer and it didn't surprise you that you had to replace them or, or actually you have multiple setups with other team members and therefore you have three of them. Yeah. So uh, one of the first one I had, I dropped it a few times, didn't cause any damage, still worked. Uh, mm -hmm. but one of my photographers was in need of a sturdier tripod. So I donated that to him. Uh, and then I bought two more, uh, one for my everyday use. And then a second one, you know, if I'm tag teaming a property with somebody, uh, we can just have very similar setups. Uh, so kind of just backup gear. Okay. Uh, uh, learning curve and training. Uh, if you've used a Matterport, a Matterport Pro 2 camera, what is the learning curve of using a Matterport Pro 3 camera? I didn't, I didn't uh, experience any, what do I do now moments. Um, and just instead of connecting to the capture app, with your Pro 2, you connect with your Pro 3, and now you'll notice that you can scan outdoors. One thing uh, I used to try to shy away, well, when I was doing indoors and there were shadows uh, uh -huh. or sunspots on the flooring, yeah, you know, the Pro 2 didn't pick that up, and so we'd have to do a 360 and convert it. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. And so that was one thing I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, oh, yeah, I don't have to do that anymore. I can okay. just and keep going. Okay, so just to, to clarify for somebody who might be thinking about buying a Matterport Pro 2 camera or a Matterport Pro 3 camera, has never used Matterport before, it's probably helpful to know if you have sun pouring in through the window in a bedroom and you're scanning, what a Pro 2 is going to not see that light. And if you don't do that extra scan at some point later in the day, what's going to happen is someone's walking through the dollhouse, they're going to fall through that now black hole in the bedroom, go yeah. right down to the next floor. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So the, the, the Pro 3 solved that, you weren't even thinking about it, but it just made that light pouring in from the window disappear as an issue. Right. Yeah. So on uh, training, so uh, assuming you either hire another photographer or you engage a photographer, but want to train him to use a Pro 3 camera, is your, what's your sense about, is it, would it be easier or harder to train the next photographer in your organization with a Matterport Pro 3 camera versus a Matterport Pro 2 camera? Uh, I would think easier just in regards to not having to do that extra step of converting when you have uh, sunspots. Um, I don't have to mention that. Um, speed and training, you know, we can get through a house quicker. Um, but, you know, we I'm not doing anything different as far as the number of scan points inside of a residential house. I'm still doing the same amount. Okay. So that that's important to know in terms of the 
the when we talk about speed for residential, if you're going to shoot the same number of scan points with a Matterport Pro 3 camera versus a Matterport Pro 2 camera, you're going to pick up some savings in time because of how fast the Pro 3 rotates versus the Pro 2. But it's not like if you were scanning a super large indoor industrial space where you might be able to do it in, in half the number of scans. Right, right. Okay. All right. We've covered a lot of ground. Is there anything that comes to mind that we haven't talked about uh, that might be helpful for anyone that's new to the Matterport Pro 3 camera? Not in particular. Um, you brought up a good question and you said, you know, how do I put it on the tripod? What In what order uh, do I put the quick release clamp? Yes. On here first. I don't know where I put it. It's right here. Okay. So what I do is I put this on the tripod first. So I'll put this on, tighten it down, and then I'll mount this to it. Um, I just feel like having this on here and trying to twist this all around, twist this all around. Yeah. So follow is quite annoying. Okay. Um, <laughs> disable that. Okay, so uh, so what I'm hearing is a pro tip when you get the Matterport Pro 3 camera, connect the quick release plate, <laughs> the quick release first to the tripod, and then second, connect the Matterport Pro 3 camera. Your chance of losing your Matterport Pro 3 camera in a oopsie, yeah, I dropped the camera moment is going to be less. I would say so. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to add one other tip and then maybe you'll see if you have anything else to add is uh, uh, th this came up because another member that we get around network forum community actually did drop their Matterport Pro 3 camera. They had bought uh, what they thought was insurance through the through Amazon to cover the camera. When they went to make the claim, the company said, oh, uh, sorry, you were using the camera for commercial use, that's excluded. So I, that. I, I've, so far, I think I've made progress with Amazon to say, hey, it's not fair for you to, you know, when I put the Matterport Pro 3 camera in the shopping cart to automatically pop up uh, to sell me an add-on of insurance uh, when a $6,000 camera is only going to be used for commercial purposes and oh, by the way, that pop-up doesn't even mention that exclusion. You have to be a really serious researcher to go get to the website of that company, go find the terms of, of the contract and know that. It looks like I've been okay stopping Amazon from that pop-up on the $6,000 Matterport Pro 3 camera, but it looks like they're still offering it if you get the Matterport Pro 3 acceleration kit. So my tip is decline the add-on because it only covers hobbyists. It, it does not include commercial use. And I, I don't know what else anybody would do with an $8,000, $6,000, $8,000 and $8,000 camera other than use it for business purposes. So yeah, that's uh, that would be annoying. Um, that would be annoying. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, Tom, any anything else to add before we say bye? No, I'm sorry, my camera's going haywire on me. It's that that's okay. Uh, Tom, uh, thanks for thanks for being on the show today to share your expertise with us. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it, and maybe we'll have another chat in the future. That's awesome. We've been visiting with Tom Sparks. Tom is the founder of Sparks Media Group, uh, located in Susun, California, which is about halfway between San Francisco and Sacramento, a uh, full service photography agency, uh, and doing uh, virtual tours with Google Street View, iGuide, and Matterport with a Pro 2 and a Pro 3, and providing coverage in the uh, throughout the states of California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas through a network of photographers. You can check out uh, uh, Sparks Media Group at sparksmediagroup.com uh, or the virtual tour division at scanyourspace.com. 
And if you have follow-up questions for Tom, he's in the We Get Around Network forum. His WGAN forum member name is at Scan Your Space. For Tom in Sassoon, California, I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network forum in Atlanta, and you've been watching WGAN-TV live at 5.